Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Muller right here. How's everybody getting along? I know it's been a while. I've fallen ill, and I want to thank all of you for your great, kind messages and uh, hopeness of getting better and resting up. I'm heading in the right direction. I'm not 100% there, but figured I'd get one of these quicker videos out, and we're going to take a look at the tropics. We're going to see, you know, we're dealing with Earl, Danielle, as well as a few other tropical systems out here in the Atlantic. And that big old trough along the East Coast is going to keep things unsettled. We'll take it all and break it all down for you here in this edition of Weather Eastern. Let's take a look, everyone. Oh, it's good to see this map again. I've missed all of you. It's great having you all on board the channel here. Once again, thank you for all those comments. Encouraging words of healing. Let's take a look here. Oh, I will provide you with what I've got here. Earl, take a look at this. Just spinning south of Bermuda by this point. Look at this. Hamilton, Bermuda. We have that next system. And next few of these systems behind it. Another system coming off the Cape Verde Islands. Danielle, Hurricane Danielle, up here into the North Atlantic again. And here is Hurricane K. I will be momentarily talking about K, how it's going to parallel up along the Baja California. So let's get into motion here. Let's see what we got going on. Take a look at this. There's a big old front there plowing across the Gulf of Mexico. So you got to watch these fronts this time of year. Here's the one off the U.S. East Coast as well. Look at this. Category 3 storm. By this point, uh, for Bermuda, uh, GFS wanting to wobble it a little bit further to the west here. We'll have to keep an eye on it here, Bermuda. But uh, I think it will slide just to your east. It's going to be really close. Look at this. Down in here, just south of the Cape Verde Islands. That is pretty impressive storm there. I want to keep an eye on that as well as this storm. Although models are wanting to take this a little bit further to the north and to the west here. And Danielle really zooming up here into the North Atlantic. And let's go in time here. Let's see what's going on. So, yeah, there it is. Um, the GFS, you know, the latest GFS just spinning it may clip. The western edge of it may clip Bermuda. So, Bermuda, you're not completely out of the woods yet. You're going to get some sort of bad weather out of this. And look at this. We start to see this stalling frontal boundary here along the east coast. Definitely want to keep an eye on this this time of year. There's our next system kind of washing out here into the Central Atlantic. But look at this. Here is our next system. Going to keep an eye on this as we head through time. So let's see if these have any chance of development. So that kind of heads off to the northeast here. I just want to back this up momentarily. Take a look at this. Here's Earl. Very well-defined eye. And I'll show you this on the Euro, too. Look what takes its place. Literally right behind it here. There's another system. This looks like it's a system from this uh, stalled-out frontal boundary along the U.S. East Coast, and it could become subtropical in nature here, so we could be dealing with some storm out of that as well. So definitely interesting times here into the Atlantic, but uh, anything to really threaten the Gulf here? Well, we do have some uh, tropical moisture really by Monday, September 12th here, really trying to spin up here, so... This might be the week we start to get some sort of development into the Gulf. You know, trends are kind of hinting that way, especially when you have a stalled out frontal boundary. And look at it here. Here's the next tropical wave, and here's another one as well by September 12th here. Um, so let's, let's continue to spin this into motion here. Let's see if we got anything to really worry about here. So, yeah, the GFS. I'm going to show you the Euro here momentarily. It's a little bit more robust than the GFS here, but look at this. This is what I was talking about. This is in the time frame of Thursday, September 15th. Look at this tropical moisture heading up towards New Orleans, Mobile, Alabama. Could we have a named storm out of this? We'll have to continue to watch it here. It's definitely going to be something that is catching my eye, and we want to keep an eye on it here, but look at this. GFS is pretty progressive here across the Atlantic, but there is a key note here that I'm going to show you momentarily on the Euro, that there's going to be an area of high pressure that builds from the Canary Islands southwestward, just south of Bermuda. This is going to push the storms more on a west-northwesterly trajectory rather than recurving in the coming weeks here. All right, so I wanted to take you through the Euro here. What we're dealing with here is there's Euro. 
Danielle. And here is our next potential system. An area high pressure here showing up on the Euro. And there's our system on the Pacific K, Hurricane K. So there's that trough along the U.S. East Coast. Let's kick this along and see what we got going on here. So look at this. As we approach uh, this Thursday, uh, September 8th, right, right in here is Bermuda, and there's the big old Hurricane Earl, potentially a Category 3 by this point. Uh, there's another system on its heels, as well as that next system uh, coming off the Cape Verde Islands, and we're dealing with Danielle up here in the North Atlantic, just a fish storm at this point, kind of like Earl is. And look at this. These systems will continue to pinwheel around this area of high pressure south of the Azores. They're going to kind of pinwheel, you know, this direction. Now look at there's some sort of disturbance over here in the eastern gulf by Saturday, September 10th this Saturday. Uh, there's Danielle. Ooh, are these two storms going to merge? Let's take a look and see uh, as we progress in time here. Whoa, look at that. Another system tries to form out of Earl behind it, and then another system, and then here's another system, uh, tropical wave here. This is Sunday, September 11th, and then another system. So we're just going to start lining up these systems. Look at the eastern Gulf of Mexico here, also dealing with tropical moisture feeding into the eastern part of the United States. And as we continue in time here, this is by Tuesday, September 13th. Look at this. Yeah, we're dealing with more systems. These look a little bit further to the south as high pressure starts to build more south and west here. Could that get us into the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico by the third week of September? Well, let's take a look here. Euro is not going to go quite that far out. It's going to be close, but look at this. Yeah, this has been the trend. Bring it towards the Caribbean islands. Next system here, a little bit stronger. We'll have to see. Look at it. it, might not recurve because high pressure, according to the Euro, will be building to the southwest. Pacific definitely remaining pretty robust here, and look at this. Pretty unsettled here. We're replacing the east coast trough with a high pressure by September 16th. All right, so let's take a look at Hurricane K in the eastern Pacific. Let's take a look here. This is going to forecast to become a Category 2. Potentially would not be surprised Category 3. If you take a look here, we're going to be watching areas from Cabo San Lucas, La Paz, Cuidad, Construcción, up to Laredo, and beyond San Quentin up here. So, yeah, watch as we go into motion here. This is going to become a pretty powerful hurricane as it parallels up along the Baja California here. Look at this. So, yeah, the outer eye wall is going to be approaching the shoreline here. This is Thursday, September 8th at 2 a.m. Take a look at this. And... It's going to skip up along the coast here. So we're going to have hurricane conditions. Would not be surprised if this is Category 2, Category 3, borderline by Thursday here. Um, definitely going to keep an eye on this. Areas further north here, uh, there, there's going to be some problems here because you're definitely not used. This is not an everyday scenario where you see a hurricane literally pummel uh, the Baja California Peninsula here. And take a look how it just rides up along the coastline here into your weekend. Look at this. Take a look at this. This is going to be getting some big tropical moisture up here into Southern California. Los Angeles, Yuma, Arizona. Look at this. This is crazy. Put this into motion. Yeah, you're going to be seeing some heavy rain this weekend in the Los Angeles area. And as this thing bends to the west... Look how close that tropical storm comes to the coastline there. It just pinwheels all that moisture northward into Southern California. And for the rest of that, for that matter, I don't really see anything else of interest here in the Eastern Pacific until you get towards the second, close to the third week here. Uh, you start to see this next potential system as well as another one here uh, back towards the west. Now, here into the Western Pacific, this is where we're going to be watching our next potential system here. Take a look at this. This is a Tropical Depression 14 likely to become our next name storm here in time. And look at how it becomes a, probably a Typhoon max wind speed to 130 to 160 uh, by September 11th here. This is going to be a big deal here because watch as we go in time here. This is going to be our big system to watch. Let's see what happens here. So as we go in time, look what look what modeling is showing here. A pretty 
powerful Typhoon. It is a compact system, very compact, but these compact systems can oftentimes become big super typhoons. And look how it just wobbles towards the west. So if you're in northern Taiwan or eastern China here, or for that matter, southern Japan up to, <clears throat> here it is, South Korea, southern Japan, definitely want to keep an eye on this system because look how it starts to slow down by Sunday, September 11th here. And as we go in time, watch this. This kind of edges towards the coastline here. Now, if you take a look at this, this is Shanghai up here. So this storm could make a run in the direction of Shanghai. Very populated area. So as we continue in time here, take a look at this. Yeah, it rides up along the coast. And this could be a very, very bad scenario. You know, it's a ways out. But if this were to verify, this would be hurricane conditions moving into the southeastern sections of Shanghai, China here. So definitely want to keep an eye on this as we go in time. With another system we're watching behind it here. So definitely keeping an eye out here into the western Pacific. And look at that. That heads to the northwest here. So definitely keep an eye on it if you're in this part of the world. Could be looking at a super typhoon. All right, so let's go out through out time here, see how these systems interact with the upper trough pattern here in ridge systems. Take a look at this here. So here is Earl. Here's K. Here's some uh, blocking up here in Greenland. Here's that east coast trough. That's what's helping lift Earl to the northeast here. So we head throughout the rest of the week, Friday into Saturday. Take a look what starts really taking hold here, this big old ridge up here from the northeast all the way up to Greenland. Trough really kicking down across not only the northern plains, but the deep south here. There's that next cold front. And we start to have ridging start to take effect along the U.S. East Coast. Let's see if that continues here. And it actually does. Until you get to about Tuesday, September 13th next week, you got a big old cutoff low here. Um, but you still have some ridging here along the U.S. East Coast. Our next potential system kind of... Stuck here, high pressure starting to build. Watch this high. It's going to start building to the southwest here as we head throughout time. And there it is. We get a little trough here into the northeast for your Thursday, September 15th. But look at that high pressure system really starting to build towards the southwest. Any of these Cape Verde systems might be steered more towards the Gulf as we head towards the third week of September. All right, so if we go in time here, let's take a look at this. So, this unsettled conditions that we've seen across the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast, this is in association, of course, with this system. It's becoming a coastal-type system at this point on early Wednesday morning. You can see we're going to continue to deal with the showery conditions here across the Northeast. Take a look at this from Pittsburgh all the way up to Binghamton here. Parts of coastal areas of... New England and the Mid-Atlantic as well. And we'll be dealing with some showers and thunderstorms down here into parts of northeast Texas. So as we go in time here, let's take a look, see if we can get this pesky system out of the northeast. And you're seeing here by 8 p.m. Wednesday, so you're going to continue to deal with all these areas here into the northeast. Showery conditions continuing, scattered showers throughout your Wednesday. Most of it, though, is going to be off the coastline at this point. You can see a circulation here, a circulation here, and down in through the Georgia and Carolinas here. That's where you're going to see showers and thunderstorms as well as along the Gulf Coast. Look at this just west of Houston on Wednesday evening. So as we continue in time here, let's see if we have anything else to worry about. Yeah, we get a few more showers, but look at this Thursday morning. That's going to be a fading memory across the northeast. You'll have some interior clouds and some showers, but you know what? This is going to set us up for a beautiful weekend across the northeast. All right, so if we take a look at total precipitation totals here, taking a look at the mesoscale models, take a look at this. So most of it's going to be scattered about eastern Texas here, parts of the southeast. But if we get up here into parts of the northeast where we've seen a couple inches of rain during the last 24 to 48 hours. Take a look at this into your Wednesday. So yeah, most of the totals are going to be from the Catskills, Poconos, uh, Susquehanna Valley, down and through the Alleghenies here. 
uh, basically the Appalachians here and then into parts of New Jersey and western part of New England here. We will have some scattered showers even up in here, parts of New New Hampshire as well as Vermont. So definitely going to keep an eye on it here. Definitely could see the heaviest totals here into the Catskills, Poconos, Hudson Valley as we head throughout time here. Probably another quarter inch average into these red circles. All right, John, uh, thank you for your capture here from Oldham, UK. 78 degrees. This was back on Monday, August 29th, right around the noon hour. Nice capture there, John. Look at that beautiful blue sky, those cumulus clouds, and the background. All right, so for the northeast, we will start to warm things up here. Look at upper 70s here in the Ohio Valley. That's going to be heading towards the northeast. Still stuck in the low 70s here in parts of interior New York, Pennsylvania, New England for your... Uh, a Wednesday here with the clouds and the precipitation. But look at this. We start, look at this. By Thursday here, we're getting into the 80s, places like Binghamton, Albany, New York City, Boston. Yeah, most of these are upper 70s, right around 80 degrees. So really nice. We head towards Friday, TGIF. Look at this. Yeah, 80s starting to kick in, low 80s, right around 80. You can't ask for better weather this time of year. Once again, I don't really see any areas of problems here look at this a beautiful weekend shaping up this will be low humidity temperatures here sunday september 11th look at this starting to warm into the mid 80s here along the east coast so definitely looking a little bit warmer and more summer like but a little bit of a shot of cooler air by the time monday dropping down into the mid 70s again Extended outlook for our hometown viewers, Binghamton to Scranton's Upper Susquehanna River Valley. Let's take a look. Uh, Wednesday, yeah, we're dealing with those showers continuing with that system that's been stalled across the mid-Atlantic and the northeast. Definitely some beneficial rains, though, a quarter of an inch. It will be showery, so no outdoor plans. Uh, doesn't look very good. Into Thursday, though, and Friday, look at that. Good sleeping weather down into the low 50s. For lows, temperatures getting up into the low 80s for highs. That's nice low humidity into Sunday as well as a few clouds rolling in. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern. There's links in the description down below for all the good stuff I am working on my winter weather 2022-2023 outlook. Get my Facebook page at Media Mark. That's my main page. Also, Weather Northeastern. Also, Twitter at Weather Eastern. As always, smash the like button, question, or comment down below. Thanks for joining me.